Okay, let's see if we can't get our induction groove on here. We have to start out by assuming that x is not equal to 1, and the instruction is to show that 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third plus on and on and on to x to the n minus 1 equals 1 minus x to the n divided by 1 minus x, and that that's true for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. So the first thing we have to do is we have to show that this is true to begin with. So step one, we have to say what happens if n is equal to 1? Well, we need to look at the left-hand side of this equation. So on the left-hand side of the equation, what's the, what's the final term on the left-hand side of the equation? We're going to sort of work backwards. The final term is x to the 1 minus 1. 1, right? So I will type the left hand side is, uh, by the way I'm using Microsoft Word with equation editor, so uh, that's why this, this looks a little funny. But uh, let's see, I have x to the 1, a, a little caret in Microsoft Word will we'll put it into the exponent. So x to the 1 minus 1, hmm, that's x to the 0. Now if you recall, x to the 0 is just equal to 1. Okay, so the left hand side is 1. The right hand side, on the other hand, is, let's see, what would happen if I plugged in a 1 for n over here? Well, I'd get a fraction. And on the top of my fraction, I'd have 1 minus x to the 1. On the bottom of my fraction, I'd have 1 minus x. Ah, the numerator and the denominator are the same, so that means that equals 1. Well, that's a good thing. That means the left and the right are the same, so the statement holds. Sound good? Okay, so on to the inductive step. That's step 2, right? And first we get to assume something. We get to assume that the statement is true for k. Assume true for n equals k, i.e., uh, let's see, what do we get to assume there? Well, I get to assume this statement. Uh, and since I'm efficient like that, I'll just take the statement, is true when n equals k. And I'm try doing that with your pencil. So, aha, my little equation editor is saving me time. That's what I want to prove is true, right? I get to use that. And um, let's, let's see if we can't go to the end. And I need to think about what I want. What do I want to be true? Well, I want the equation, this first equation, to be true when n is equal to k plus 1. So I want this equation true when n is k plus 1. Let's see, how am I going to get there? Well, I need to start with the right, left-hand side of this equation. So I'm going to start a new equation going to start with the left hand side, 1 plus x plus x squared plus dot 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 plus, notice that my last term is going to be x to the k, my second to last term will be x to the k minus 1. Why would I why would I separate out and write two terms at the end? Well because I know that the, all but the last term is the thing that I get to assume by induction is equal to the fraction 1 minus x to the k over 1 minus x. Now, assuming that that's true uh, helps me out. Why? Because then I can just add this last term that I had on the right left x to the k, and then these things are truly equal, right? Here's my inductive assumption, and then I have an x to the k added on to both terms. So, left-hand side is exactly what I want. The right-hand side doesn't look like what I want, but I need to 
see if it is what I want. Well, how do you do that? You combine the terms. How do you combine something with a fraction? You need to get similar denominators. So I'm going to take this term right here, and I'm going to get the second piece as a fraction. Hmm, how can I get it as a fraction? Well, uh, I need to put an, uh, what is it, an x, a 1 minus x in the denominator, so that means I'll get a 1 minus x in the numerator too. Okay, and then uh, perhaps I should just sneak that up, right, if you have a term multiplied there, it's the same thing as multiplying it by the numerator. So hopefully you can see that x to the k is the same as that term. Well, okay, so I have the two similar fractions now, same denominator. Now I want to combine them, so I'm going to take this numerator and I'll kill that second fraction and I'll just put it into this fraction, so I've combined the two fractions. Now I just need to simplify. Well, what's the first simplification I could do? I could distribute that x to the k to these two terms. So uh, let's see what that would end up giving me. Um, hmm, 1 times x to the k. Well, that's pretty much just x to the k, right? What's x times x to the k? I'll kill my parentheses since I won't need them afterwards. What's x times x to the k? Well, that's x to the k plus 1. Ah, now I'm looking really similar to what I'm after down here. Notice the only thing I need to do is cancel my one negative x to the k and my positive x to the k, and I'll be home free. I'll cancel these two terms, and I have exactly what I was hoping for. So, what do I say then? I say, thus, we have proven that the statement holds for k plus 1, and that the statement is true by mathematical induction. And it always helps to spell induction correctly. Hope that's useful. Uh, by the way, you want to make sure and get rid of, I did it by pushing it off the page, but you want to make sure and get rid of your little scratch work at the bottom that said what you were after. This is your proof. All done.